Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another uh, business intelligence tip with Dashboard Gear. Today we got a topic on how to write a specific type of report in SQL reporting services. Today we're going to be talking about how do you create a hierarchical that's hard to say, hierarchical reporting chart in SQL reporting services. You would use these for things like organization charts, maybe your chart of accounts roll up or your organization roll up by department and so forth. So we're going to dive right on over into SQL reporting services and I'm going to fire up creating a report. So the first thing we're going to do, like usual, is we're just going to use Report Builder. As you know, I like to use this for uh, people writing reports that are beginning. You could also use Visual Studio, and the process is pretty much the same, but it's a little bit easier for people to get started using Report Builder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data set, and what you're going to want in your data set, I'm going to find one off my HR dev. We'll do one on employees. You need something in your data that's going to be uh, like an employee and its manager ID or a department and its parent. So like a parent-child relationship, if you're familiar with that. So we build all kinds of tables and dashboard gear that work for this, but one I'm gonna use is I just have on my development system here, an HR supervisor roll up where I have an employee and then it's got the employee that that uh, employee reports to and the reports to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick employee and the employee name. We'll do uh, the reports to in here something like that. And then I'm going to add a filter because I've got a lot of garbage. So I'm just going to pick one company that I've got, company one. I've got many companies with different things. So basically, I want all the employees, their names, and their employee number that they report to for employee one. If I do next, you know, this is the, the traditional reporting where I can just drop in, you know, I'll just do those two on my report. I don't need to see who they report to on the report per se. But if I go ahead and I add that in, I put employee, employee name on my rows and do next. And I'll go ahead and I'll run this. What it's going to do is create a report. And I'll drop that over there. We're going to left justify everything just so I have enough uh, room here. We'll left justify the employee name so everything shows up. If I just run this as is right now, it's basically going to give me just a listing of the employees and their employee names, basically a list of employees. Um, make this column a little wider so it, I should have trim, trimmed those employees because it's basically wrapping down there. That looks a little better. Just each employee, employee name. Not so much of a hierarchical at this point, but maybe I want let's say Richard Franklin on one level and I want all the employees that report to Richard below them and so forth. What you have to do in SSRS is, is a few things. One is down on the details section, whatever section you wanna put that hierarchy on. So in this case, I just have a details row. I don't have any other groupings. I'm gonna do group properties. I'm gonna add a group expression and I'm just gonna group that by employee. You want your child level item to be there. So this would be your most granular employee or department or whatever is kind of the most granular identifier there. So in my case, it's the employee ID. Then the key to make this to where it rolls up that is down here on the advanced option of that group, there's a recursive parent field. And here you want to pick the field that identifies the parent ID or who that employee reports to in this case uh, at that level. Now, when I say OK here, if I did nothing more than that, if I run this, it's going to look very much the same as what I had before. You probably didn't notice it, but it did rearrange the employees a little bit. But one of the things you can do, there's some built-in functions that will start revealing some of the secret sauce here and will start act, act, adding some additional features, is if I make this a little wider and I add in another column, I'll insert another column to the right. Down here on the row, I'm going to put an expression. So those of you that have watched my previous sessions know that I've uh, added in uh, expressions, which are like formulas. You can create an expression that says equals level. And level is a built-in uh, function that SQL reporting services have that shows what level they're at in that recursive function. So as you can see, some are at level zero, which mean the top. Level one are those that report up to them. Level two is 
you know, a couple levels down, three, so forth. So you can see there's some there's some levels being generated there. We just can't see it. Now, the key to seeing these like levels or more like hierarchies is back here on the design. If I go back down to this uh, group level and I do, um, we'll do it down here on this employee, I'm going to say text, text box uh, properties. Actually, I think I can do it down here on the group properties. Visibility. We're going to hide the group but we're gonna display it anytime the employee is toggled. So if I go ahead and, and run this, now we only have our top level employees. And if I click on one, it's gonna start showing the employees below that in a hierarchy. And Stephanie doesn't have any, there's a few more underneath Elena and so forth. So it did that. Now the next thing we'll wanna do to kind of kick this up a notch. So it put those in the right order. It grouped them within that and it gave us an ability to show and hide the rollups. But you know, it's not real obvious based on this that there's people below that because it doesn't really do anything. So what I like to do on that is for this particular field, and I'm gonna make it a little bit wider um, in this case, for this particular, um, text box, what I'm going to do is click in the text box and do text box properties. Then I'm going to go to alignment that's here. Right now it's taking everything in that text box and giving it a two point uh, padding. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a formula in here that's going to turn this into an expression where we're going to say equals and then I'm going to make this uh, C string. I got to do a conversion function on a string uh, for this. And it's going to be two plus, and this is where we're going to take advantage of that level, that instead of just a flat two point across the board, we're going to take the level using that level function, and we're going to um, multiply that by 15. So I'm going to add 15 points for every level that's in there. And then I'm going to add that. Um, then I'm going to add PT to the end of the function. So basically what this expression is doing is creating an expression that's going to be giving me a value of 2 plus the level times 15 points. And that's what it's going to make the padding. So as the levels get bigger, it's going to indent it more. So if I say OK on that, say OK here, if I go ahead and I run this, level 0, as you can see, is not indented at all. But as I go down, now it indented it made it to where it jumps out a little more into that uh, hierarchy. So just depending on the level and what's there, you will see uh, different things. So you can use the alignment function. Now you can get very creative with that level on all kinds of things, whether you want to control the fonts, the colors. Um, I've done things before where I've made boxes around it uh, based on certain things. So by using the combination of the grouping of the child. So just to review how we did it at the base level is on the details section, group properties. We added a group at our child or our lowest level identifier. And then we added on the advanced tab, the identifier of the parent of that uh, lowest level child. Once you do that, it groups them in that right order. And then we use the visibility section on the group to hide it, but show it anytime the employee is clicked. So that's um, how you can do some simple hierarchical reporting using SQL reporting services. And hopefully you enjoyed this session. I know it's something that I use quite often when people want to do a hierarchy of a chart of accounts or employee structures. So until next time, we hope you enjoyed this session and we'll talk to you again next week.